Welcome to Now Church. We are about to begin. Please take this opportunity to pull out your smartphone so you can like, share, and check in on our social media platforms, including Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And please use the hashtag NowChurch. Thank you, and enjoy today's service. in the established be done in this room today and that every heart as we get ready to worship you would be open and receptive to what you want to say to how you want to impact them to change them God we love you and we thank you for this privilege of being able to come into your presence through our worship and with that being said I want you to do me one more favor and give him the biggest praise you possibly can come on come on come on come on come on one two three hey
sing it together. I will believe. Say, I will believe for greater things. There's no power like the power of Jesus. Let faith arise. Let all agree. There's no power like the power. Let's sing it real strong with us. Come on. Say, I will believe. Yeah. For greater things. There's no power like the power of Jesus. Let faith arise. Let all of
God, time and time again, we've watched you move. We've watched you do the impossible. That's the God that we serve. So as is my, my tradition, my custom, my desire, I wonder if you guys can lift up your hands all over the building. Come on all over this room and just say, Jesus, nothing is too hard for you. Say it again, Jesus, nothing is too hard for you. If you believe that this morning, just worship him, worship him, worship him today. You know, I was reading a passage in Psalms, and it just started to name all the different places in the Bible so many different times, Moses and Jacob and Noah and Aaron and Paul, and just the different ones. Talked about how God would make a way for them time and time again. I don't know what you walked in this room needing today. I don't know if you're watching by way of live stream. But there's nothing too hard for our God. Do you believe that this morning? And in the midst of a storm, he can make a way. He can make a way. We've seen you do it before. We know you're going to do it again.
before you're gonna do it again There's nothing too hard for my God Come on, this is for somebody today Just take these moments to let your faith rise Nothing's too hard for you Sickness is not too hard for you Cancer is not too hard for you Death is not too hard for you, God You can restore marriages, Jesus Nothing, nothing, nothing is too hard for our God yeah. We've got one last part, sing it with us, team Say, nothing's too hard, let's sing Cause nothing's too hard on my way to church this morning on my one of my worship playlists came this old integrity hosanna music song from 35 40 years ago called god will make a way where there seems to be no way i don't know this song is this the first time you're doing it pastor lindsey it is yes. i don't know this song but i know the lord spoke to my heart that today there are people here that have to know that this isn't just a song that this is a word yeah. And I want to say to you, whatever you're dealing with right now, that you may be in a situation where you go, I don't know how I can even do that. Or I don't see how this can possibly happen. I want to say to you today that this song is directly to your spirit if you'll receive it that way. God will make a way where there seems to be no way. God will turn rivers into a, or deserts into rivers. He will, he will make a way in the wilderness. Rivers in the desert, he'll do whatever. Stop trying to figure it out. We got some news this week on the building. Duke Energy is supposed to have our power on the next two or three weeks. They've been saying two or three weeks for a while. <clears throat> but this week they gave us, they said, okay, we've got the scheme now, but we had to order new transformers because your whole system is bigger. We got a new door transformers and it may be six to eight weeks. We said, no, that's unacceptable. And so we're gonna, you know, we're gonna get you on the on the agenda. And I said to the team, no, no, no. We're not, we don't have to sit here and just go, oh, okay. We've been doing our part, we've been patient. Love is patient, love is kind. We've been loving, loving and kind, patient. But there's a moment where you say in the spirit realm, hang on a second. This is for kingdom purpose. This isn't just, this isn't just for frivolous things. This, we're not, you know, not that roller skating is bad, but we're not just building a roller skating rink. We're trying to do something that's having eternal consequences. Here. And so when you get resistance, you got to press through it. I'm going to say to you, God will make a way for us. He's going to make a way for you. Stand still and see the salvation. Lord. That, just, that doesn't mean don't do anything, but it means... Praise him and trust him. Praise him and trust him like he's already made it happen. You, let me say this. You've already been through some stuff before that it, you didn't know how you're going to make it through. And he was faithful then. And if he was faithful then, he's going to be faithful right now. Would you just lift your hands right? You know, no, wait, wait a minute. Don't, don't. Put your hands down for a second. Here's what's in my spirit. If that word is for you, you're facing something this week and you just feel like... If I don't get, if God doesn't do something, I'm, in, I'm under a lot of pressure here. I need God to do something for me this week. If that's you, would you raise your hand up right where you are? Hey, Pastor, and you see God move this week. Is this the song you're talking about? God will make a way where there seems to be. Just close your eyes and receive that right now. You and your hands raised. He raise. works in ways we cannot see. He will make a way for me, oh, he will be my guide, hold me closely to his side, yeah, with love and strength for each new day, he will make a way, oh, he will make a way. And those of you around people with their hands, 
hands raised, would you put your hand on their shoulder real quick? Let them know you're here to support them and you're agreeing with them right now in prayer, in the spirit. The Bible says where two shall agree as touching anything they ask, it shall be done. Let's pray together right now. Father, in the name of Jesus, we now pray over every person whose hand is raised, whose heart is open. We don't know what those situations are, but you do. And you are a healer. You're a deliverer. You're a God of freedom. You're a God of provision and blessing and abundance. You promise to take care of your children. And we just release your mighty power in these situations. We thank you there's freedom here. There's freedom from addiction. There's freedom. There's deliverance. There's, a, there's power today. There's an anointing in the room today where your presence is moving. And Lord, we ask you to touch each of these. Bring the encouragement they need to keep going, to keep growing, to keep trusting, to keep believing. And let this day mark a, an, an historic day in the spirit realm where they stood in faith instead of giving heed to all the voices of darkness out there, all the lies. We rebuke depression. We take authority over discouragement in the name of Jesus and we say no. You have no power over the people of God. You have no power over the people of God. We break that assignment of hell off of this person, yeah. this one right here, and we say, be blessed, receive all that God wants to do, and watch him make a way where there seems to be no way. In Jesus' name. Now give him praise like it just happened. Give him praise like it already happened, okay? Come on. Praise him like you already got it. Come on. You will make a way.
already there's a great presence of God here and I mean you know what the only way to go is up from here at this point this is amazing and so we've got a lot of stuff planned for this week I just wanted to let you know what's going to be happening we, we're not going to pray now we're going to I'm going to ask you for prayer during this week uh, we're about to launch out a full team going to Poland Krakow Poland and uh, when I say the whole team we have 14 people 15 plus Pastor Richard uh, so uh, we're going to be going out. We're going to be meeting with Pastor Chad Braswell's, uh, some of his team as well, too. So in total, we'll have 21, 22 people, 22 people there in Krakow, Poland, and just really just bringing the life of God in every way. Last year, we were planning on going to the same church, Pastor Zibby, same church, and we're going to bless him. But during that time, of course, there was the Ukrainian refugee crisis, and their church was completely... Um, uh, I don't, I don't, not overwhelmed in a negative way, but in a positive way with an incredible opportunity. And so we, we were in all of those refugee camps this last year, every day. We were there ministering to people every day. This year, we're able to go back and though we're going to one of those camps that's remaining, most of the people have gone back and found their way back in. That's praiseworthy right there. That most of those people have found their way back in and back home. There's still a few more. The camp that we're going to is those that have been displaced and they don't have their way back yet. And so we're going to be encouraging and praying for them. We're also going to be preaching in three of his service, ministering in three of his Sunday morning services next Sunday. So that will be very busy. And then we're going to be uh, doing several different projects during the week. One of them, we're going to be uh, helping in a, a community center for youth, another community center for seniors. Uh, we're going to be uh, going into, this is cool, they have two areas or locations within close to their city and outside in another city that they're looking to plant a new fresh work, an extension of their church. And so they're asking us to go and kind of do some spiritual reconnaissance. We're going to be praying and opening up doors spiritually for them. So we've got some teams prepared for that. And we also have a team that's going to be doing some construction on their church and helping them. It's a very full schedule, so we ask you for prayer. This week, we're going to be launching out on Thursday. So uh, anyway, it's going to be fantastic. Great stuff is happening at Now Church. I want you to turn around, find somebody you didn't ride to church with, and welcome them right now to Now Church. you're finding your place now. You know, it's exciting to see everybody here. Don't you like this? This 10 o'clock during our summertime, it's really cool to have everybody gather together first and second service. Like, you know, because you might have some people here that you've never met, but they've been here longer than you. So that's pretty cool. We're glad that you all are here in service today. We've got a few things we want to highlight. One particular in the know of something that happened this last week. We had our youth gather together on Sunday night. They had Cereal Slee Sunday which is a challenge to say I've been practicing, but they got together and they had some cereal and a bunch of, I'm sure they got all sugared up. It was awesome. And so uh, anyway, a bunch of youth gathered together, had some prizes and games and fun time and a really powerful word of ministry, encouraging them. It's always cool to have our now youth get together. So uh, let me hear it for now youth. Aren't they awesome? Hey, look at that. She's laughing down here. She sees her face really big right here on the screen. That's pretty awesome. So anyway, oh, there she is again. See, okay, take a look. There she is, everybody. Look at her right here. Look at her right here. <laughs> anyway, so that is cool. We're glad that you guys were enjoying that time. Uh, listen, we are always encouraging everyone that comes to Now Church. Maybe it's your first time. I know somebody it's your first time. I'm going to shout out. Right back here, I've got this wonderful lady right back here in the back. Wait for everybody. This is, yes, this is Cindy, Cindy. Cindy, Cindy Galatro. I met her at the chiropractor. I was just, I was just talking. I was yakking away, you know, and she said, she said something like, I like the way that guy talks. And she came over because we were just getting all hyped up and excited. And she said, I'll be here Sunday service. Thank you. You're here. Awesome. 
wonderful sunshine attitude lady. Anyway, so it's so cool. So ch check this out. If this is your first time, you've already accomplished something. We always welcome everybody here to Now Church. And make sure you go by our welcome center. I want to make sure you go by our welcome center. But here's what you've already accomplished. It's your first week of what we call three-week challenge. It's check out Now Church three weeks in a row and see what God does. Why do we do that? We're building your ante anticipation because you're not just attending, but you're, you're allowing yourself to come into the presence of God for him to start working in you and speaking to you. Sometimes it's layers. Sometimes he works through some stuff. But he's got some things to say. Let's open our hearts, open our ears, give him that three weeks, and God can really get involved and really change your life, all right? I want you to help me welcome up Pastor Richard as he continues on this series. Well, it's been a crazy week for me. I'll tell you about it in a second. But before I do that, I just want to say, uh, before I get started, how thankful I am. You know, I know 10 o'clock in the morning and doing one service is kind of a... Um, a sacrifice for some of you. I know that, you know, first service crowd, they like to come in and blow in, blow up, and blow out. And then the second service likes to sleep in. And so, you know, everybody's, everybody's given an hour here. But I want to tell you why we do this. Not only does it help build momentum through summer when people feel free to go on vacations, and, that, and they should. You should enjoy your vacation. But it's really crucial that you understand that we have a whole lot of volunteers. We have a, our, our volunteers are called Now Crew. And now crew is, I think, over 150 people now. And they volunteer. That's what helps make this church go. Not just what you see on the platform, although some of them are on the platform, but a lot of the behind-the-scenes things. And those folks work day in and day out. When you see, when you get to summer and you have a, a service and it's, you know, a, it's half full first service and half full second service, these people are feeling tired already. This is going to refresh them. It's going to make them ready for when we're back to two services in the fall. It's going to be an awesome time. But I want to thank you for your sacrifice. And I want you to give it up. Listen, I have somebody to honor today, and then we'll clap for all of them. But the Curiels have been in my heart this morning. Frankie and Nakota. You know Nakota. She's up here singing. Where's Nakota right now? She's probably in the... There you are. Stand up for a second, Nakota. And then back at the soundboard is, is her uh, other half. And he is a great guy. Frankie, would you stand up where you are? I know you, you're down by the soundboard. You're gonna, he's, about to flip, he's about to flip my switch off. <clears throat> anyway, these are unsung heroes. They don't ask for any glory. They don't ask for anything. And they're representatives of 150-plus now crew volunteers. They were supposed to be away this weekend and just have a romantic time together at the beach or something, from what I heard. And then somebody had to call out today because of a child being sick. And they had to come back. I just, that just, these are faithful, faithful people. And we don't talk about them enough. So would you get up for the Curiels and all the now true volunteers? We appreciate you guys. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And uh, we're going to, I think we should find a way to get them a, a weekend at the beach or something some other time, okay? Let's help them do that. All of now crew. No, no, again, no, no. no. <clears throat> We're going to the beach. <laughs> anyway, I just had that in my spirit. I just want to say a big thank you. I had a crazy week this week. We were here. We had powerful prayer Wednesday night and a great crowd for prayer, which was awesome. And when I got home, uh, my wife handled all the prayer, but I was for some reason I was still tired. And I got home at ten fifteen Wednesday night after prayer. I got a call from a pastor friend of mine from Mobile, Alabama, who never calls me. And he says, uh, he said, I am so sorry to bother you so late. I said, well, that's not late for me. Um, and it's even earlier for him. It's an hour earlier there. But he said, um, he said, I'm sorry to bother you, but he said, I need a favor. I said, what's that? He said, well, my guest speaker for my 15th anniversary men's conference for this weekend had to cancel two hours ago because of a death in their church. Can you come to Mobile and preach this weekend? I said, well, I'll have to check and see. Because I said, I'm, I, I'm, I'm headed on a missions trip this week. There ain't no way I can drive eight hours uh, on, you know, and then drive back and then be fresh for Sunday and all that. So then he goes, I'll fly you. So, so we scrambled, and my wife was my travel agent, uh, at midnight on Wednesday night 
and found me a flight on a turboprop job <laughs> direct from Orlando to Pensacola. And then I drove the rest of the way across Mobile Bay. But anyway, it was powerful. Friday night, I did a men's conference, and it was tremendous. It was very powerful. So thank you for praying for me, even when you don't know what you're praying for, because I didn't have time to tweet it, post it, picture it, do anything with it. I'm like, I get a call, and the next thing I know, I'm on a plane. And I, the, next, the next morning, I'm like trying to figure it out. So anyway, thank God for his presence and his power, and pray for uh, my friends at Surge Church. They're called Surge, S-U-R-G-E, a burst of moving forward. I think they said it's, it's about breaking limits. Anyway, Mobile is a fantastic city, and I want you to give it up for Pastor Brad Sullivan and those guys, some of them may be watching today. Anyway, just a blessing. And another thing, I, I, I didn't listen to my wife. Um, I admit it, and I was... <clears throat> Sorry, I was wrong. Anyway, let it be on the record. Anyway, my wife said, the, the pastor said, hey, bring your books. I said, well, I'm, and I'll throw you know, a couple of, you know, some books in the double bag. So I took two boxes of books, which is 40. My wife said, you need to take 50 books. I said, well, uh, there's only room in this double bag for 40, probably. Anyway, this is going to be heavy. She said, well, okay. So anyway, I, I prayed about it. I felt peace about 40. I get there, all 40 books sell, and then they ordered 10 more books. <laughs> exactly 50 books sold. And, and, I, and I texted her and said, okay, you were right. You, you win this one. She was exactly right, 50 books. So 50 more seeds sown over there into Alabama. Sweet home, Alabama. Anyway, praise God for that. Let's get right into the Word of God. Today's message I call Bridge to Your Birthright. The Bridge to Your Birthright. <clears throat> the first little passage may be a little wordy, but I want you to listen to it. John chapter 3, verse 1 from the message says this. There was a lame, there, excuse me, there was a man of the Pharisee sect, Nicodemus, a prominent leader among the Jews. Late one night, he visited Jesus and said, Rabbi, we all know you're a teacher straight from God. No one could do all the God-pointing, God-revealing acts you do if God weren't in on it. Jesus said, you're absolutely right. Take it from me. Unless a person is born from above, it's not possible to even see what I'm pointing to, to God's kingdom. And Nicodemus said, how can anyone be born who's already been born and grown up? You can't re-enter your mother's womb and be born again. He's like, this, is, this doesn't make any sense. <clears throat> what are you saying with this born from above talk. So Jesus said, you're not listening. Let me say it again. Unless a person, and here's, I love the way the message brings it out in this paraphrase. Unless a person submits to this original creation, the wind hovering over the water creation, he's referring to Genesis chapter one. This wind above the water, wind over the water creation, the invisible moving the visible, a baptism into a new life, Unless you accept that, it's not, it's not possible to enter God's kingdom. When you look at a baby, it's just that. A body you can look at and touch, but the person who takes shape within is formed by something you can't see and touch. The Spirit, the Holy Spirit, and becomes a living spirit. So don't be surprised when I tell you you have to be born from above, out of this world, so to speak. You know well enough how the wind blows this way and that. You're rustling through the trees, but you have no idea where it comes from, where it's headed next. That's the way it is with everyone who is born from above by the wind of the Spirit, the Spirit of God. My friends, you are a new creation. If, you, if you're born again, you are not just a better person. You're not just a little, you're not the new and improved. You've changed. Inherently from the inside, your spirit is new. Now, just because you've been born again doesn't mean you don't have struggles. It doesn't mean you don't have temptations. It doesn't mean that you, that you don't it, it have the same proclivities that you had before you got saved. But your spirit is renewed, and now you have to fill that spirit up continually so it overflows into your body and into your soul, your mind, will, and emotions, okay? I want to read one more passage, and we'll preach. Actually, two more quick things. Hebrews chapter 12 says it this way. Verse 15 from the message. 
Make sure no one gets left out of God's generosity. Keep a sharp eye out for weeds of bitter discontent. A thistle or two gone to seed can ruin a whole garden in no time. Watch out for the Esau syndrome, trading away God's lifelong gift in order to satisfy a short-term appetite. Esau traded his birthright for a pot of stew. You know well how Esau later regretted that impulsive act and wanted God's blessing, but by then it was too late. Tears or no tears. Finally, Galatians 4, 7 says this, Therefore, because you're a new creation, you are no longer a slave, but a son. And if a son, then an heir of God through Christ. Now let's pray. Father, we ask you to open the eyes of our heart that we can understand your word, work it into our lives. We continue to pray and agree with those who stood a few moments ago for a breakthrough, for you to move and make a way where there is no way in Jesus' name, amen. amen. We're talking about new creation living this month. You're being transformed. You know, when you, when you see a, a caterpillar go into a cocoon and spend a season there, and then you see it emerge, you don't go, oh, isn't that a nice caterpillar that added wings? Right? It's a butterfly. It's been, and we, we talk about that term metamorphosis. You learned it in science class. Metamorphosis. Well, that word metamorphosis or metamorpho is the same word that, went, went, that is used in Romans that we used last week and said, be not conformed to the image of this world, but be transformed. Be metamorphosed. Be morphed. Be metamorphosized. Be a different thing than you used to be by renewing your mind in the word of God and in relationship with Jesus. You're not the same. You... you when you're born again, you don't get this magical where everything's, you know, you just tiptoe through the tulips. And I, I, I've had people tell me, well, somebody told me if I'd give my life to God, everything would be easy. I said, well, you're not reading the same Bible I'm reading. I mean, it's, it's not easy, but it's victorious nonetheless. It's not, there's, the pro, there's no promise that, it, that things get easier. The difference is that now he's with you and he's going to open the way and be the way in your life. So we've got to get to the place where, look, if somebody told you that, you know, give your life to Jesus and it's all, oh, it's all going to be peaches and cream and dancing through fields of lilies. They lied. It's going to be better than it was, but there's still going to be some tough moments because now, now you, now you got, an, now the enemy has marked you. But greater is he that is in us than he that's in the world. We don't, we're not afraid of the enemy. We don't, we don't, we don't try to stir him up, but, but we have victory over him. He, the Bible says he's under your feet. The enemy is under your feet. Under your feet, why? Because you've been in that new creation. Ephesians says you've been seated together in heavenly places with Christ Jesus. Positionally. I know we're on earth. I know we're in these human bodies. I know what those limitations suggest. But the reality is we're not under the same limitations because now spiritually you're not under principalities and powers of depression and darkness. You're over them spiritually. But if you don't see it and act on it, then you're going to be under that oppression and, and just submitting to them. Paul wrote in, in Romans, sin shall no longer have dominion over you. Then say you're never going to be tempted to sin anymore. Isn't that great news? No. But you it doesn't, it's not your boss. It's not your boss. I heard some kids in, a, in, a, in the store. This is a long time ago. But these two little uh, brother and sister were talking, and um, the little boy was maybe five years old. The little girl was maybe three. And, he's, and they're just talking back and forth. And finally, the little three-year-old says to her brother, you're not the boss of me. <laughs> three years old, she already picked up on that. Sometimes you've got to say to sin yes. and sickness yes. and disease yes. and bondage, you know, the stuff that tries to vex your soul. Hey, you're not the boss of me. I'm not under the dominion of that anymore. I now have Christ in me, the hope of glory. I now have not just the hope of heaven one day, the hope of his manifested power coming in and through my life now. 
not just in the sweet by and by. Right now, he is powerful. You have a genuine birthright as a child of God. This month we're talking about identity. We're talking about who we are. And let me tell you, it's so crucial. It's not who you are because you're so good. It's not who you are because you had a few breakthroughs or you're doing better or you've been growing in the Lord. It's about you having an identity in Christ, in who he is, so that when God sees your life, he doesn't just look at you and your imperfections and impurities. He looks at you and sees his son. He sees Jesus being formed in you, for you, and through you. You have a genuine birthright. In the ancient world, the firstborn son was the principal heir of the family estate. He'd receive all the rights, all the privileges, all the responsibilities of his inheritance on behalf of the whole family when, the, when, that, when that birthright was passed on. Now, the word says that Jesus is God's only begotten and firstborn son, but now has freely shared his inheritance with his many brothers and sisters, us. And you're now blessed. You are now part of God's family. You didn't just pray a prayer. You changed families. You were, you were in a family uh, uh, of ignorance in, in darkness. Doesn't mean, uh, you know, so are you saying I'm a, I was a bad person? No, I'm saying you were a sinful person, a sinner. Listen, when Jesus died for the sin of the world, he died for the whole condition of that sin. Sins, sin and sins. Sins, what I learned in, in seminary years ago, is that sins, sins are what we, the, the, the missing the mark of God's best. We all do that. But sin as a condition has been disempowered. Sin as a condition has been, has been nullified and has, it, it does not have victory in your life anymore. Jesus does. But until you see that, grasp it, and, and grow enough to where you continually, when you go through these challenges, hey, it's, you know, my life is, is hidden with God in Christ. You are joint heirs with Jesus heirs of salvation. Peter writes, you, there's an inheritance reserved for you. This month, as we talk about growing into mature, fired up children of the Most High God, I want us to focus on both the privileges, the benefits of our sonship. And when I say sonship, I'm talking about the sons and daughters. It's, a, it's like mankind. It doesn't mean there's not womankind, okay? There's kind women and there's mankind. Anyway, so <clears throat> we are all part of the same family in him. There's neither Jew nor Greek nor male nor female. Uh, what I, I had to say in Alabama the other night, uh, neither Auburn nor Alabama. Because they're, they, 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 they're, it's, it's big time up there. By the way, I had, two, I had two guys, two of the main guys in that church. Uh, the pastor there is a huge Bama fan. <clears throat> huge. They have Bama stuff all over his office. All this memorabilia. And he's gotten to meet Nick, Nick Sa I mean Saban and, uh, and all that stuff. And, and uh, anyway... Um, anyway, he's got, anyway, so I walk in there and all of a sudden the worship pastor and the pastor's right hand guy come into me and they said, we are Gator fans. We love Ocala. We love Gainesville. We love that area. We are Gator fans through and through. I said, how did, he, how did you get with him? You know? <laughs> the reality is though, there's not all these divisions or all these hyphenated words that we have today that try to put us in these subcultures against each other. There's neither, those divisions are broken in Jesus' name, and we are one blood, one people, one group, and when you get born again, you're part of that family, and it breaks down those other things. Not that you don't still have your own individual ethnicities and everything else, and backgrounds you do, but you're, but you're no longer bound by that. You get to enjoy the good parts of that culture, but, you don't, but you're not bound by the bad parts of that culture. We are one in him, miraculously, because our spirit is new and recreated. So I want us to focus on both the privileges and benefits, which everybody wants to do, but also the responsibilities. With every privilege comes great responsibility. With every privilege comes great responsibility. You need to write that down. You remember it, because Jesus said this way, to whom much is given, much is required. The blood of Jesus not only cleanses us from our selfish, sinful heart condition, but also sets us free, listen, from our victimhood 
of sickness, poverty, and demonic control. And that revelation must become our perspective concerning everything. Listen, when I got born again at 19, many of you know my testimony, but I was a cigarette smoker when I got saved. And that didn't change overnight. I still struggled. I was trying to quit. I would tried to quit a thousand times. My, my, my girlfriend, then, then my wife, uh, she didn't smoke. She didn't like smoke. She, she wouldn't have even gotten with me as a smoker, except somehow God ordained it. But she didn't like the fact that I so, smoked cigarettes or, or anything else for that matter. But anyway, she didn't like that. <clears throat> but that's, that was part of who I, was, who I felt I was. I started smoking at 12 and smoked till 19. And um, got saved in like late May, early June of 1980 and started getting the word and that kind of thing. And I was, for all intents and purposes, I was, I was the same soul and the same body that I'd been. And so I still had that addiction. And, and I kept telling her, we had, we had our, our baby was due, our son was due in October. And I kept saying, okay, as soon as the baby's born, I'm gonna quit smoking. <clears throat> well, I woke up. August the 11th, 1980, I woke up one morning and I rolled over and I said, I think I'm done. I think I'm done smoking. And she goes, oh, you know, and, and uh, I mean, I didn't, uh, cigarettes today, uh, crazy, but the pr prices back then, it was 75 cents a pack. And I thought that was ridiculous. <clears throat> when you don't have any money and then you're, you know, smoking it up anyway. It was just ridiculous. And so I woke up and I said, I don't think I need to smoke anymore. And she'd heard, uh, you know, she'd heard me try to quit a bunch of times and eventually I'd be, I'd be all fidgety and going crazy and she'd just say, just go ahead and smoke. Just, just smoke. I'm just tired of seeing you, you're tortured. August 11th, 1980, I woke up. I said, you know what? I think I'm done. And I went and I got my, I still had some in a carton and I took all my cigarettes and I broke them individually and I flushed them down the toilet. And, and I never smoked since. I didn't go through the withdrawal. I still had, you know, trying to figure out what I could chew on or something, but you know, um, but I didn't, have, I, didn't, I didn't have that same drive because I was free. Now I was free the day I got saved, but I didn't know I was free, see? I didn't know who I was. I didn't know. I didn't, I didn't know my new identity. I just knew that I, was, that I was going to heaven when I died and that God was with me now. I didn't even know anything that that meant. I just knew something had changed and I was going to be a better person. Now, if you're here today, I'm not trying to condemn you. Maybe you're watching and you're, and you're, you're you know, smoking a pack a day right now. You're, you're chain smoking while you're listening to me. Going, hey, that's good. I'm glad they're Pastor Amen. <clears throat> I'm not trying to condemn anybody here because my point is we're all bound and it doesn't change instantly. But something, if it, it, it changes in your spirit and if you feed your spirit, it'll change your mind. And if you change that in him, the power of the Holy Spirit will be with you to shift that behavior. You know, of course, when I quit smoking, I was 135 pounds. And so you do find a way to, you know, I guess if, you're, if, you, if you like something and you, and you have that proclivity, so I kind of exchanged it for, for ice cream. You know. <laughs> it's a little more culturally acceptable. But anyway, so. <clears throat> anyway, with every privilege comes great responsibility. And so we've got, to, we've got to have a revelation that becomes our perspective concerning everything. And that's what I want to focus on today. Everyone has their own life lens. A lens, the, you know, the glasses through which you see everything. If you were abused as a child, that becomes a lens. It becomes a way that you look at, at the world, the way you look at people, the way you look at authority sometimes, your perspective. Everyone has a lens, their own way of looking at the world, their vision. And it's a jaded vision. And so you, you, you have this, we all have a, a way we look at the world through our own lenses, our own lenses, our own lenses of experience, our own lenses of addiction, our own lenses. And so we, 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 when we have these lenses on, we, can, we project 
things on other people that really aren't there, but we kind of see them there because it's our lens. Are you following me? So we kind, of, we kind of expect different things and we look at the world differently. For, to give you an example, hurt and wounded people see everything through the prism of their own pain. That becomes their whole perspective. And I know this looks silly, but I want you to remember that because here's the, the reality is that you, we all have that, that we're looking through life and looking at God, looking at other people through this prism, this this. This, this, these glasses and these lenses, brokenness becomes their window to the world. And I would say even brokenness becomes their window to the world. It gives you a muddied up lens. You begin to think that everyone else around you is as broken as you are or just faking it. They're all pretending. We're all, we're all you know, unconditionally broken and broken and, and, and irreparably broken. And I'm just telling you, though we begin broken, you don't have to stay broken forever because God is a healer and he fills those cracks. He fills those voids. He, he, he fills it with his love. That's why the Bible says his perfect love casts out fear. If you're a fearful person, and you have all this suspicion and, and, and you, you know, you're jaded in the way you're looking at everything, I want you to know that his love, when you really understand the fullness of his love for you, and, and listen, I'm, I've been saved for now 40, what, 43 years, and I still am learning more about his love and how much he loves me, how much he cares for me, how much he's gonna take care of me, no matter how long. It's not just when you first get saved. It's, it's, a, it's a lifestyle. And there's, there are wa there's waves after waves of his love. And it sometimes comes through when you're in a mess. And you don't feel lovable. And his love never fails. It never gives up, Pastor Lindsay sings. It never runs out on me. I love that those of, those of us who have been abandoned at some, in some way in our lives that Jesus reaffirms what the Old Testament says about God. I will never leave you. I'll never forsake you. We have, a, we have a God that loves us so much. He's never going to abandon us, especially if other people do. He's never going to fail you. He might not do everything you want him to do when, he, when you want him to do it. You're not God. He's God. But he's going to be right up there tucked alongside of you. You know, when the Bible talks about the Holy Spirit, Jesus introduced the concept of the Holy Spirit in the book of John. He said, hey, the Holy Spirit is going to be with you. And he calls him the paracletus, which is a, it sounds like parakeet, but it's not. It's par the paracletus, it's a word, it's a Greek word that means that he comes alongside of you and literally tucks himself right next to you. You're never alone. You're never alone when you give your life to Jesus. That's the difference. God wants to heal your lenses today. Sometimes when we get a muddy up, we begin to think everyone else around us is, as, is going through the same thing. Or, or, or like I said, they're, they're just pretending. And, and, they, and also in this whole world of class warfare right now, there's this whole thing where, it, you know, if you don't have something, blame somebody who has it. If you don't have it, blame them, because they got it. They must have cheated, lied, and stolen it. And it's a wrong concept. It's a, it's a, it's a spirit of deception. It's a lie from the pit of hell. We need to be people who are about what God wants to do, what God wants to say, and believe what he says about us. Healthy people. The Word of God is supposed to be our lens to the world, our worldview. The Bible calls itself our mirror. It's a lens. What is a mirror? A mirror is the place where you go to see what you look like, to see what you look like, to, to see yourself in a different perspective. You even go try and close sometime, and you got those three-way mirrors behind you, and you got a mirror, and you got these other mirrors, and you can see even behind you, you can look back. You, there's, this, there's this mirror image. 
And that's what the Bible is. When we see in the mirror, we are reminded of who we authentically and consistently are. But James chapter 1 says, don't just be hearers of the Bible. Because if you're a hearer of the, of the preaching of the word today or a reader of a devotional or whatever else, and you walk away and you don't apply it to your life in some way, if you don't do something with what I'm telling you today, if you just leave here and go, that was a nice word. You forget who you were when you saw the mirror. James chapter 1. For if anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like a man observing his natural face in a mirror, for he observes himself, goes away, and immediately forgets what kind of man he was. A mirror is the self lens. It's the way you see yourself, your perception. Your, we call it self-image. Self-image. Every time you dwell on the promises of God's love letter to you, the Bible, and see yourself as God sees you, beyond mental or emotional feelings. See, see, that's the problem. We look at ourselves through the lenses of how we feel. And you've got to get past that. And I want, to, I, I want to add this here. As you get older, you have to really press past that. Because there, there, there try to come a few little aches and pains as you, as you get older. And the, I'm not telling you they're not going to be there. I'm just telling you that through Christ, your natural man is still not submitted to that pain. And so you walk by faith and not by sight. Or as in the case of right here in Ocala, some of you drive by faith and not by sight. But anyway. <laughs> if you don't do something with what you see, when you see it, to activate it, the Bible says you forget it. Born again isn't just a Christian catchphrase. That's why I read you that whole passage in the beginning in John chapter 3. You can look at it from different translations and see different perspectives on it. But born again isn't a Christian catchphrase or some kind of religious routine. It's how Jesus himself describes our conversion encounter with him. We are changed legally and dynamically in our spirit man that was dead or asleep, and the moment you're, you're acknowledging God, inviting Jesus to be Lord of your life, repenting of your sin, in that moment, a supernatural something happens and your spirit is born again. It is recreated. And it is supernatural. And the power to change and grow is there now. Before you're just trying to do trying to be a better person, trying to do whatever. Now, the power that you need. You say, Pastor, you don't know how many times I've blown it and messed up. I do. I do understand. Because we are still human in that sense, but we're no longer submitted. We now have the power to say yes or no. We now have the power to submit to God, resist the devil, and he'll flee. We have the power to cast down imaginations and those thoughts that are trying to make themselves bigger than God in your life. We have power over that. You have power. You're anointed with power from on high. You have Jesus in you. You have the Holy Spirit with you, through you, in you, right next to you, and you're not, some, you're not the same as you were before. You're not just warmed up a little bit better. No, we're not trying to just get you to come here and do your little social... I, oh, church is fun. I Listen, I hope church is fun. I hope it's not boring. But ultimately, it's not just about that. You can be around here. Listen, they used to say, you know, you can hang around KFC all your life and you don't turn into a chicken. <laughs> Doesn't mean you're a chicken. You, you, you can come to church and just be one of those people that comes and goes to church and you can get the church lingo and the church language and the, and the church culture and the church flow. But that's not the point. It's about being changed. Different. New thoughts. New power at work. New abilities. New trust in God. New, new, new way out of no way. Keep going back to that. We're changed from the inside out. We become a brand new species of life on earth. New creatures in Christ. The old stagnant way of living has ceased to exist. And now because of Jesus and in his anointed power, we start a journey 
of transformation, metamorphosis. And we're becoming different. Not just better, but anointed. Empowered from on high. Without, the Bible talks about without vision, people perish. Without proper vision, people stumble all over themselves. They perish by casting off restraint, doing whatever feels right for the moment. I read something recently that really blessed me. It said King David was a visionary. Don't you remember that? And it defined the word vision as this. Vision, I love this definition. A combination of a deep dissatisfaction with what is and a clear grasp, grasp of what could be. Let me say that again because I messed it up. Vision is defined as a combination of a deep dissatisfaction with what is and a clear grasp of what could be. That's the new creation. That you have new lenses, new vision. That your old lenses have no power. And you put on the vision of Christ. You put on the vision of Jesus. Christ in you, the hope of glory. Finally, this. What's your attitude towards your birthright? What's your attitude about it? Esau despised his birthright. He didn't care that he's the firstborn. He didn't care about all his privileges. In fact, the proof was in the fruit. Because one day when he was really hungry, he'd been out hunting all day and didn't get anything. And he came in and his brother said, hey, I'll make, I got a great dinner prepared for you. Smell this. Mm. All I want is your birthright, your blessing. He says, ah, what good is a birthright going to do for me now? I'm starving. Give me the food. Later on, he came back and cried and cried and cried because he realized he left it. You have a birthright, but you have to desire it. You have to esteem it. You have to honor God for it. And you have to grab it for yourself. Nobody else is going to help you with your birthright. Nobody else is going to help you see who God made you to be. You have to decide it, and you have to look at the Word of God. If you don't want it, this sounds harsh, but I'm going to say this to you. If you don't want it, God will find somebody else. If you don't want it, God will find somebody else. It sounds mean, but look at the Scripture, even in the New Testament. You have the power to choose, yes or no. You have the power to walk away. You have the power to embrace. I'll read you one more thing. By the way, uh, Pastor Chris, if you want to go ahead and be released, and you and Pastor Tristan and get ready, if you're being baptized in water today, this is part of what I'm talking about in John chapter 3, born of the Spirit and water. You're free to go right now and get uh, changed into your uh, baptism T-shirts. It's going to be a great day. We hope some of you are going to stay after church today and see these precious 10, 11 people get baptized in water. This is a miracle day for them. They're actually saying that the, the old things are passed away. And when they come up out of that water, they're saying, I'm testifying. I've been made new in Christ. I'm not just a better version. I've been changed. I've been changed, okay? So just give me, give me a couple more minutes while they're getting ready. just want to let them out. Author Mike Thompson said this. I read this quote months ago and wrote it down, saved it. One way, this is a quote, one way Jesus empowers us to overcome the world is by enabling us to overcome the perspective of the world system. A believer who is not aware of his position in Christ is still trapped in the world's viewpoint of defeat, sickness, lack, sin, and brokenness. This attitude locks people into small-mindedness and the normal grind of earthly living. This is why it's so important for our minds to be renewed daily by God's Word. My friends, the conformity to the Word, Romans 12, 2, is a natural process that takes no effort. It's default mode. Any day you're not filling up with the Word or trusting God in some of your honoring, worshiping, praising whatever, in your own home. Every day that you miss that, you're, you're defaulting to just being the same old person. You're feeding who you used to be instead of who you is. Okay? I say it to be funny, but it, it's the truth. It, you, know, it, it, you are who God's called you to be. That's who you're supposed to be. 
Trust God in that. But every day that you don't fill up in some way with something from God, a nugget from God, a thought from heaven, a, a God-honoring worship, an, a, an expression, God, thank you. When you do get a breakthrough, thank you. Instead of just like, oh, look what I did. Every day you're not filling up. You're going into default mode. And default mode, mode is just back to the same old thing, back to the same old grind. And you can choose it. But transformation into the image of Christ is a supernatural act that takes place by faith. It takes place by faith. I'm almost done. 3 John 2 says this. Many of you know this promise by heart. Beloved, John writes, I pray that you may prosper in all things and be in health just as your soul prospers. Isn't that a great promise? But nobody ever reads the next verse. Be careful of that. The next verse explains it. He said, for, that's a conjunction. He connects the previous law. Conjunction, junction, what's your function? I'm connecting two thoughts. For, I rejoice greatly when brothers came and testified of the truth that's in you, just as you walk in the truth. My friends, you can prosper and be in health, even your soul prospers, according to the measure you're walking in truth of the word and not deception of the world. All kinds of stuff flying around out there. All kinds of lies. All kinds of stuff. Trust God. Trust God. Walk in His truth. When you're walking in this thing, when you're walking in the truth of what God says, instead of everyone else's opinion, your soul will prosper. Your soul will be stronger. And it will overflow into your physical health and into your well-being of abundance instead of lack. Why? Because as I said earlier, you're no longer a slave, but a son. And if a son, then an heir. You're in God's will. You have his power of attorney in Jesus' name. You have everything you need. You have all the rights, all the privileges, but you also have responsibilities. Because to whom much is given, much is required. There's a difference between a slave mentality and a son or daughter mentality. We come boldly before the throne of grace. For God's sake, remember who you are and live that way this week. I'm going to challenge you as we go. That's our takeaway today. I'm going to challenge you that this week you're going to have moments where you can revert back and just, you know, Something happens, you know, ah, rickin and brickin and brickin and brickin and brickin and blah. Just go back to the same old whining, the same old cussing and blowing it, whatever. You can do that. You can have a fit if you want to. It gets you, it, all it does is take you back. But you can stand still and see the salvation Lord and say, you know what? Okay. But I'm going to trust God. Father, I'm going to trust you. You said in your word, that you're working everything together for my good. Even though it doesn't look like it, even if I don't see it, you're working. If I don't know, even if I don't know it, I know in my I know in my knower, I know deep down you are working. Remember who you are in him this week. Take the high road. Do noble and anointed things to help others this week. As you get under pressure, Go do something for somebody else and see what God does for you. Let's pray together. Father, thank you for your word. We thank you for abundant life. We thank you, Lord, that you're working. Would you reveal yourself to and through anyone who's struggling today? May there's someone watching online or maybe you're in the room and you've just never actually prayed that prayer and said, Jesus, come into my life. I don't need a religious experience, but I want to know you. I want to know if you're real. I was sharing the Lord with a, an unsaved friend this week who's lost and just said to him, because he's searching. I can tell he's searching. Like lost people do sometimes. I've known this guy for years. And he's always searching, but he's always searching in the wrong place. Now all of a sudden he's searching on things like uh, creation, how the world began and he's looking for God things he's even looking in the Bible at some stuff but he doesn't understand it and I just said you know 
It's time to quit your search and just, the search is over. Here's, here's where the search ends. Out loud, just say, God, show me that you're real. Show me that Jesus is real and I'll serve you. Show me in a way that I'll know and experience you, not just have some religious trip. Uh, show me and I'll live for you. If you would do that, I promise you, God is able to start revealing you, revealing to you himself in all these different ways. He's able to do it. Just cry out to him today. You don't have to come to this altar, but you do have to come to the altar of your own heart. Because your heart is a throne, and sometimes you've been king, you've been queen on your own heart for too long. And you may, and that's, that's why if your life is messed up, let me tell you something, God didn't mess it up. You messed it up. And repentance is simply saying, God, I messed it up. Would you come help me? You take control. You take authority. And he'll do that. And you'll be born again. A new creation. Starting the metamorphosis. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Did you get something today? Amen. Give, give God glory today. We're going to go out there in just a few moments. We got several uh, being baptized today. Our friends are from, what is the organization y'all are with? What is it? Heart of Florida Youth Ranch. They've been coming the last few weeks, and we're so glad they're here. And uh, several of the young ladies have received the Lord, and we're just so blessed to see that transformation take place today. It's a great thing. So today when you leave, if you can just stand outside, just you can go out the door, just, just stand outside. It's gonna, it's gonna be hot, I'm not, I'm not gonna lie to you. But it's gonna be about 10 people. And they're gonna, we don't even have a microphone out there right now because of the, the, the whole area is not done. So they're gonna shout. They're not gonna take long and tell long testimonies like we do when we have a mic here. But they're gonna tell you by what their action is that they've received that power from on high. Amen? Amen. All right. All right. Let's, uh, ushers, if you get it, we're going to receive our tithes and offerings real quickly right now. Um, on my way to the airport, 6 o'clock the other morning, sun was coming up over the turnpike as I was headed to Orlando. And I got in some traffic for a few minutes, and I look over the side of the road, and there was a plant coming up through the asphalt all by itself. And I had this whole thought about the power of seed. You know, seeds are miraculous things anyway, but consider the power of one single seed. If you can find a tiny patch, if, if, it, if, it, if a seed can find a tiny patch of dirt, a little bit of moisture, and a crack of light, it can grow up through concrete, through asphalt. It can grow up through hard places. And what I felt from that is simply this. Those of you that are givers in the kingdom of God, you have a whole lot of stuff going on in there. You have a whole lot of harvest, harvest coming. Don't get frustrated if you don't see what's going on. Because before that little plant could come up through that asphalt on the side of the road, I don't know what all it had to go through, but it, it didn't look like anything was there for a long time. And suddenly, boop, Something pushed its way through concrete in the power of a seed. God says he gives seed to sowers. If you're a sower, if you're a, a person who plants good seeds, good encouragement, tithes and offerings, whatever, all the areas of life where you have an opportunity to sow seed, the promise of God is this, that you're going to reap a harvest if you don't faint, if you just wait it out and keep looking for it. Keep trusting him. I want to pray for you and pray for your seed. I want to thank you for your giving. It's enabling us to do a lot of things. In Poland, if I could tell you my, what my wife did shopping this week, getting all the stuff, materials to give away to people in Poland. I just, she just gets such joy out of it. She's like, a, 
She just so bubbly as these things are coming in. So we had a huge Amazon thing yesterday. And as I was coming back from Mobile, I kept getting these, uh, these things from the, uh, my, ca- my camera, my front porch camera. Somebody's there. And this guy's like, is the, the poor Amazon guy. He's like carrying all this stuff. I'm thinking like, what is that? Oh, that's for Ukraine and Poland. Amazing stuff. You did that. She's purchasing it, but you're doing that. The giving here keeps on giving and hopefully never stops. Remember I talked to you in May, a chain reaction of praise is what you start when you sow your seed. Let's praise God right now and pray. Father, in Jesus' name, would you bless each gift and each giver? Would you multiply the seed? And Lord, I just pray for that person who has seed in the ground and it seems to be trapped and they can't seem to see anything coming through. But Lord, I just believe you and trust in you. We ask you to bless them. Let that seed come through the concrete right now and burst up through the hard places and produce a harvest. It's harvest time. We proclaim it. We started out that month in January and I'm gonna say it again in June. It's harvest time, 2023, for the people of God. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you for your giving. Awesome. You can go ahead and give Jesus a hand clap. That's pretty good. Awesome. What a great word reminding us of our birthright and our promises that we have in God. Just a couple things real quick before we get out. Um, remember, please, that this Thursday, we said it earlier, but we're sending the team. We are sending them. So we've joked about it before, but if there's a point at some night where you see their eyes you know, wide open, pray for them. You never know what they're encountering. So we want to make sure that they're covered and uh, sent out by us. And then secondly, next week is Father's Day. And we love and we honor and we're so grateful to have strong men of God in this house. So if you guys uh, have a dad or if you're a father, we're going to have you register. And so we give, some, we give away some great gifts. Pastor Gill, again, is awesome at getting those. I don't even know what they are yet, but we're going to give them away next week. So make sure you register. And with that, say it again. Oh, and you must be present to win. You can't send it by way of somebody else. Yes, ma'am. And then there will be social media updates throughout the week from what's happening from the team in Poland. Did you enjoy today? Stand up on your feet. Stand up on your feet. What an awesome morning. God bless you. Please take a moment and be a part of the baptism. We'll see you. Have a great rest of your day. Thanks for joining us at Now Church. For the latest updates, visit us at nowchurch.com, including live or on-demand video, event registration, online giving, and much more. And don't forget to follow Now Church on our social media platforms, including Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And please use the hashtag NowChurch. Thank you.